Hello, I'm Jack Jones from Spud Pickles, and this is a video demo of Ghost Radar Connect for the iPhone or iPod Touch. We will begin by starting the app. The first screen you'll see is the radar, and I'll just walk you through a few of the features, a few of the buttons and what they do. This is not a video to help you Early. help you perform a paranormal investigation. It's just to show you the features of this application. The first thing you might want to notice is that when you start up the app, it's Alert. learning your environment, learning the energies, trying to figure out what's normal and what isn't. So initially you'll probably get several false readings. And there's a setting where you can control this. You can set it so it doesn't um, say the words to you while it's warming up. These lights down here, these three lights, are an indication of how warmed up the application is. Each light lights up sequentially as the, the uh, calibration phase continues. <clears throat> when all three lights are lit up, that means that the calibration phase is complete and you should be able to begin your paranormal investigations. Um, the first thing I want to show you is this logs this logs tab right here. Yeah, pull it up by just selecting the little word that says logs. It shows you the different sessions that you've recorded. Um, these are a couple. One I've done earlier today and the other one is the current one. The one on top is the current session. Um, and you can see that it's had 14 events already and it's untitled. We can go in and look at that particular session and it'll tell you when it started and what your different settings were set to and it will show you all the events that occurred in that session. So you can see that we just heard the word fairly right after that there was a blip that came on the radar at a radius of 0.85 and an angle of 5.37. You can edit this session, give it a title, um, we'll just call it demo. And we're done. So, you can see the title is now appearing there. I think if we go back to the previous screen, you can see that it now has a title, whereas the previous one is still untitled. And other things you can do inside the session details screen is you can share it to Facebook or Twitter, or you can delete the session altogether. Um, I'll finish up there for now. Um, <clears throat> there's four different screens or four different consoles that you can access from this main screen. You can either access it by pressing these buttons, radar, box, cam, or readings. So right now we're on the radar screen, you kind of see that the button indicates that. If you press box, oh, we just showed you another feature. Um, if you want to access the word that was previously said, but it's not showing on the screen anymore, you can tap the little Ghost Radar logo up here on top. And we'll bring that word back for a few seconds so you can see what it was. Um, so this is the box screen and then there's a cam screen for taking pictures um, and the reading screen which shows you all your readings for all sessions. So you can see right at the top it shows you that the word kept was was said and it gives you the time that it was said and then there's an indication for a blip with a radius of 0.2 and an angle of 1.26 and then the little icon on the far right next to that indicates its strength. So it looks like it was a medium to low blip in strength. Pennsylvania was a word that was said, a range, so on and so on. You'll also see, if you take a picture or a audio recording, you'll see those show up here in the readings. So let's just go back here to the radar. Um, down here on the bottom, you can make a recording. So if you press this record button right here, you have to press record first. And then it starts recording 
audio. So hopefully if there's any EEPs around, you might be able to catch it with this audio recording. Once you're done, you press the save button. And that should now appear in your readings list. Over here you can see there's an audio event. You can go into it and view the details. See what the settings were when it was taken. The time, that type of stuff. Which session it was in. It was in the demo session. So if we play it. Press record first. And then it starts recording audio. Morning. So hopefully if there's any EEPs around you might be able to catch it with this audio recording. Once you're done you press the save button. Okay, so now you have an auto recording, you can share that out to Facebook or you could email it to yourself. There's lots of different ways to, to share things and all that's controllable from within there. Um, or you can delete it if you want from here as well. Okay, so the middle button right here will allow you to use the, the torch. Uh, on the camera or the flash, you'll turn it on so you can use use your whole device as a as a flashlight if you liked. So you can see that it's not on right now, but when I press the button, it's now on, so it can act as a flashlight. So the third button is called night, and it, it kind of dims out the entire screen for you, so it'll help you preserve your night vision. So if we press that, you can see that it kind of gives everything a a little red tint. Okay, so the knob over here is where you control the uh, go back to the radar screen. The knob controls your sensitivity settings. So right now it's set on medium. You can do a pinch and rotate gesture to change it. So we've just changed it to a low. Now one thing when you do that is it <coughs> causes the entire application to recalibrate itself which means we're now working in a different session, a brand new session. So if you look on there, you can see there's now a new session up on top. And if we change the sensitive settings again, you'll see a new, entirely new session pop up. So that's one thing to keep on mind when you're changing sensitivity, is that you will create a new session, and all your new events will go into that new session. Over on the far right, with this button, is how you access the advanced settings. So if you wanted to go in here and, and change each one of these individually, this is how you would access this. Change each one however you like. And then press done. And now you've got a new session associated with those new settings, the new sensitivity settings, which you can see there. Okay. We have over on the right hand side another little panel, another little drawer that'll pop up if you press it, called Options. In here, you can tell the app that you don't want it to speak while it's warming up. Because when it's warming up, those, those words that are spoken are probably not going to be very accurate. So if you just want to avoid that, all the, the words that are spoken while it's warming up, you just turn that to off. The next setting down is called Interface Sound Effects. So uh, I'm sure you've noticed that when a blip comes on the radar, you get a little blip noise. If you don't want to hear any of those noises or any of the button noises, like these buttons make noises when you press them. If you don't want to hear any of those, you turn that switch to off. Now, none of those buttons will make noise and the blips won't make noise. If you want to turn all sounds off completely, then you can put this silent mode to on. But I don't want the silent mode and I don't and I want to hear my sound effects, so we'll turn that back. But we'll leave Speak During Warm Up to off. Here we see an App Info button. This tells you that the application was produced by Spud Pickles in the current version, which is 4.0.1. It also allows you to access the FAQ for the frequently asked questions. A little help section that'll kind of explain different parts of the app for you and kind of give suggestions on settings, stuff like that. There's a support button that'll allow you to fill out a form to send email to Spud Pickles to get help. There's a credit section here that shows you who worked on the application, including the 
graphics designer and the theme songwriter Sean Austin where you can also go to to iTunes to check out the theme song if you like or play a sample here if you like to hear it. And the last one is the end user license agreement which is kind of tells you what rights you have to the app and what we provide and stuff like that. So now we're finished with the app info section. The other button on this screen is the vocabulary button, which is how you access the application's vocabulary. Here you can see all the words that Ghost Trader knows about. There's a lot of them. You can add a word. Say so you want to add a a a. And there it is right at the top of the screen. Now, since that's a meaningless word, we can delete it by simply swiping across its row and a delete button will come up. Press the delete button and it's gone. You can also clear all the words since there's about 2,000 of them. If you want to start from scratch with your own set of words, just hit clear. It'll go through and clear out every single word. Now your word list is empty. Ghost Radar doesn't know about any words. So let's add one. Say, let's add demo. And so now that's the only word that Ghost Rider knows about. So if we click out of here and come back in, you'll see that demo is the only word that Ghost Rider knows about. Now say you wanted to bring back all the default words again. All you really need to do is clear out the list, exit out of here, at which point Ghost Rider says, oh, I don't see any words, I better add in all the default words again. So once we go back in, you'll see all the original words are there again and you're back to the original set. So we'll finish that. Okay, what I'd like to do now is show you the camera feature. And we'll move from the radar screen to the box to the camera screen just by swiping. That's another way of moving across the screens if you like. So now we've activated the camera, which you can see my fingers behind there. To take a picture, you press the little red camera button and let's get something in the frame that you can see. We click it and you hear the camera sound and you've taken a picture. So, go to the reading section, you'll see there's an image there of my finger. And that's as easy as it is. So from here you can share it or delete it or whatever you want to do from there. Okay, what we're going to do now is show how the share features work. So we'll go up into readings. We'll look for that image we took of my finger. And we'll press the share button. And we want to share it to Facebook today. So we'll press the Facebook button. Now we've already logged into Facebook so it's not going to ask us to log in and we've given the application permissions. So this is with the screen that you'll see if you've gone through those steps already. And it's basically just a text box that you can edit if you like, however. It tells you what your settings are set to, it tells you the date and everything, and it's going to post this image. So it's all set up for you unless you want to edit the text. All you got to do is press send to Facebook. And there it is. It's up to Facebook. You can also use the share button to email yourself. Email a copy of the image to yourself or the audio recording or the blips or an entire session if you like. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Evernote, Flickr, however you want to do it. So cancel out of there. I'll go and show you what it looks like when you share a whole session. So here's a session with 11 events in it. We can say share to Facebook again because we've already got that set up. And here's the entire session. It shows you all your events, all 11 of your events, and the time and the settings. Again, all we got to do is press send. There it is.